brother and sister, peace to you from the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we are so thankful that we have this uh, time to uh, read the scripture and to worship our Lord Jesus. Let us have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that in the midst of this uh, political uh, unrest and instability, we have this time to set apart to worship you. And you are the one who truly reigns in heaven. You are the ruler of the all creations. We thank you that we can gather together in the name of our Lord Jesus to worship you and to give uh, glory and praises to you. We ask you to uh, teach us from your word through your Holy Spirit, the word that we can apply to our lives and transform our life to be more like our Lord Jesus. And we want to follow our Lord Jesus as the hymn we have just uh, sung. Uh, Christ is enough for us. Yes, indeed. Christ is indeed, indeed enough for us. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus, that we know you, that you are the one who resurrected from death and we have eternal life. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Today I am so touched by the song that I just uh, sang early on. I'm not sure whether you are touched by the song or not. I, I, I cannot even sing out, you know, from, from my mouth. Uh, of course, this song uh, is so uh, matching to my topic, Follow Jesus Faithfully. Why so touching to me? Uh, of course, you know, I've just come back from Australia for the last, uh, after 10 years of serving in Australia, I decided to return to Hong Kong. And this decision didn't come out just a few months ago. This decision originated almost 30 years ago. So if I look at the situation right now, I don't think I will come back to here. <laughs> because Australia, Melbourne is so good. It has been uh, chosen by, I mean, the people around the world. That is the best place to live for seven years in a row. So nobody will, will, will understand that why I need to leave Australia, Melbourne, not any other places, okay? <laughs> Melbourne, Australia, and come to this political, <laughs> so unrest, in sta unstable country or city. But why? So many people ask me the same question. Just one reason. Because God has given us a simple invitation. And in, in fact, it's a command. Come and follow me. We need to respond to this invitation. Come and follow me. Jesus is making this invitation 2,000 years ago. And you need to know that you are following Jesus. You are not following any other thing in the world. As the song has just, we have just sang, Christ is enough. That's why we need to follow him. So are you sure? My question for you this morning is, are you sure that you are following Jesus? Answering me, not to me, I mean. Because I'm asking you to answer this question personally to our Lord Jesus Christ. Are you following him? Are you following him? So when I sing the song early on, I'm, I'm asking myself, am I following Jesus or have I been following Jesus faithfully? 
It is very personal, but universal invitation. Two thousand years ago, and here in the passage, the same word, following Jesus, occur. Is in present tense. It emphasizes ongoing, not just beginning. Maybe you have been following Jesus ten years ago, or thirty years ago, just like me. No, it's an ongoing process. We need to answer the question: Am I following Jesus ongoingly? This is the invitation. And here we have a very wonderful picture. Of not just one person following Jesus. Here, maybe we have only about one hundred or two hundred something people. Assuming each one of you are following Jesus, you are just a small number of people. Because here we have one 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 hundred forty-four thousand people following Jesus. So in this word, it says they follow the Lamb. Wherever he goes, so we are asking why here God is using them as a testimony, as a model for each one of us. As not just one person following Jesus. Sometimes it's really very really, very difficult to find even one person to follow Jesus. You know that. But here we have so many brothers. One hundred and forty-four thousand brothers following Jesus, and we need to ask why emphasizing brothers. And usually, we have seen so many sisters following Jesus, right? In the church, especially in Hong Kong, I was uh, converted to Christ in Hong Kong. After conversion to Christ. Five years later, I went to U.S. and spent about 14 years there studying in Dallas Seminary for 14 years full-time study, finishing my study in U.S. and then went to Australia for another 10 years. So I've been living in the overseas, serving the Lord for 24 years. But I've been seeing all over around the world. Especially, of course, for Chinese churches, there are a lot of churches. They have a lot of sisters following Jesus, very faithful. Am I right? Do you agree? You better agree. That's true. I have seen so many missionary. They are sister, and they go out in pair because they are not married. But here we are so interested. Why we have? All brothers, they are following Jesus. Do you know why? How come we haven't seen so many brothers following Jesus? And sometimes I heard around sister asking, "How can I find someone who is really loyal to Jesus?" I try to find a, another potential, you know, future mate. You know, looking around, there are no brother really loyally following. But here we have 144,000 virgins, brothers, following Jesus, and they are standing in a Mount Zion, and this Mount Zion is in the heaven, and this 144,000 Christian, they are redeemed from the earth. They are brought by the blood of Jesus and redeemed, have eternal life, and they are now standing in heaven, worshiping, along with the twenty-four elders and the four living creatures, and of course with all many, many other angels. And they are very specially connected with Jesus Christ. And the lamb here is Jesus. Why is the Jesus? Why is because he's using the the, the word lamb. This was specially uh, 
pointing to Jesus. And it doesn't mean that you see the lamp. You see Jesus. Because this word, I saw, I look, in NIV translation, I look, and then he asking actually a command. Please look. There's two uh, words here repeating the same word, look, or, or behold. So the first one is, John said, I look. He's describing and he, 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 his, his vision. But at the same time after he look, and then he inviting you to look, to behold. So I look, and then please look. He want you to focus on what he has just seen. Okay? There's two words, but in NIV is compressed to only one word. So it's very important. Looking is important. Seeing is very important. So John is saying, please look, I see the lamp. And this word has been used many, many times in the Revelation. But if you believe that the, the author of the Gospel of John is the same as the book of Revelation, the first time this word occurred in the Gospel of John, in uh, chapter 1 he said, look. John the Baptist is pointing to Jesus. Look, behold, the Lamb of God who took away the sin of the world. So, here the Lamb is pointing to Jesus, the resurrected Christ, and flowing in heaven. And along with him, there are 144,000 Christians. And you may ask, how am I relating to them? Am I just like them that I, I will be able to stand along with, with all other 24 elders and angels and worshiping God? And I'm, I want you to notice we are actually represented by this group of people, just like then they are able to come to the throne of God and then we can also come to the throne of God too. Why? Because it's, there's only two conditions. With his name and his father's name written on their forehead. So you, are, you need to ask, am I having the same name on my forehead? There are two things in order for you to be qualified, to be just like them. The first thing is, you have his name. This first name is the name of Christ, or the name of the Lamb, the name of Jesus. And the second name is the, his father name. So there are two names that we need to have on our life. So they are already in our life, if you are real Christian, genuine Christian, so-called, have converted to Christ and been baptized. Well, I'm doesn't mean that baptism is the requirement for salvation. I'm saying that the first, the first name is the name of Christ. When do I have this name on my life? When? On the time of your marriage with Jesus Christ. Okay? Just like when I married, I mean my wife married me, okay? And then her, her name is Tan, T-A-N. So I remember in U.S., when she married me, I changed her name to my last name. From Tan to Xu. That's the first uh, name that you need to have. So on the time that you accept Christ as your personal savior, then you have his name in your life. So so-called you are Christian. You belong to Christ. So everything uh, that your spouse has belongs to you. So everything Christ has belongs to me. So Christ is enough because Whatever Christ has, I have. So I told my wife, if I die, 
everything that I have belongs to you. And then she said, what do you have? And I said, yeah, I have, I have all things to hold here and all these are books. <laughs> yeah, if you have Christ's name in your life, you belong to Christ. When? On the time you accept him as your husband. Because church is like a husband connected to the Lord. It's, it's a marital relationship. The second name, his father name. This is the name on the, on the time that you accept God as your father. You are going back home. God created each one of us. Each one of us belongs to his creation. Nobody is outside his family. But because of sin, we go astray. Because of sin, we have separation of our relationship with our God, the Father who created us. So on the time that you say, oh, I awake, I realize I need to U-turn and go back to the Father's house. From that time on, you are having your, your father names on your life again. So you have two names. We have two names if we are genuine Christians, so-called. So these are the Christians. They're just like us. But there are only 144,000. Why? Because the Bible says they are the first fruit uh, set aside over to God. Here in verse, uh, verse, uh, verse, verse 4, these are those who are not, who did not defy themselves and they follow the Lamb wherever He goes. They were purchased from among men and over as first fruit. First fruit means the first batch. And these are the people that have been following Jesus. When? During the time of tribulation. The seven years of tribulation coming. So before the, the Lord's return, there will be seven years of earthly tribulation. And during this time, everyone who don't worship the idol or worship the Antichrist, or the false prophet, they will be persecuted. And many of them, they have to give up their life to follow Jesus. And these are the first batch of followers of Jesus during this critical tribulation. So in the future, it doesn't mean only have 144,000. And you have to be this uh, observing the very a big difference between 144,000 Israelites and 144,000 people here. They are not the same thing. Because in Revelation, there are 144,000 Israelites from 12 tribes. And they are Israelites. People of Israel. But here, they are among all nations. They come from all tribes all tongues and all nations. So in representing different kind of people during the tribulation, they follow Jesus. And now they have persecuted by this uh, anti-evil government on the earth and then they are now martyr and become offspring, first fruit, the first batch of Christians during the time of tribulation offered to God. And they have, they have four things that we need to learn. I'm, I'm asking you the question. How do I know I follow Jesus? And here we have 144,000 Christians. They follow Jesus and we can learn from their example. So the first thing is be renewed in worship or renew your worship, renewal. There are four things. There's a very important word in verse 2 and verse 3. 
And I heard sound from heaven like the roar of rushing water and like a loud power of thunder. The sound I heard was that light of harvest praying their harps. And they sang a new song. The, the word new here is very important. Because if you look at different translations, in Chinese Bible, they try to dilute this word, new. So in Chinese uh, NIV, the reading is not straightforward. He's trying to say, they are trying to sing a song as if, as if it's a new one. Why? But in, our, in here, NIV, the, the, the version that we have is a new song. Straightforward. Because there is a few translation. Later, new, uh, I mean later manuscript, they have the word as if. And why Chinese translator try to dilute the meaning of new? Because they have a preconception. Preconception. It's, it's a wrong misconception. Because according to the Bible here, there's no word as if. It's just new. So why they choose a, a late manuscript to translate their Bible instead of following the old translation, the old manuscript? You see? Because we are so accustomed to our tradition. That's why we need to see the word. We need to look at the text. And the text is, they sing a new song. Absolutely new song. But that is hard to believe. Imagine, these are the people, they are already martyred and now glorified before the throne of God. And they are a common concept among the church. They believe that, okay, I'm, I'm so glad I, I, I accept Christ and I can go to heaven. But please, not now. I want to live longer on the earth. Of course, not Hong Kong, okay? Probably. But I'm, I'm saying a lot of people say, it's good to believe God and can go to heaven, but not now. There are so many things I want to do now. I want to finish all these things, enjoy all these things first before I go to heaven. Why? Because in heaven, everything has no change. Everything so-called eternal. Mean, mean no change. It actually means boring. <laughs> boring. So, Pastor, I'm so glad I accept Christ. Christ take out my sin and I can go to heaven with God. But please don't take away my life first. I want to enjoy my life on this earth first. Why? Because it's so boring over there. And there's no new things in heaven. But I want you to look at this text. The Bible says, when you go to heaven, you will sing a new song. A song that you haven't sung before. Or even you have sung the amazing grace before on your earth. But when you go to heaven, you will sing amazing grace again and then. You will experience a direct encounter and transformation for the same song or hymns that you have probably sing for many many times on your own. Just like I, I come here this morning, the song that you used earlier in the worship, I've been singing for a long time. But I haven't been so touched ever before until this morning. I cannot even say a word when I sing. Why? Because I am having a new renewal, new encounter with my Lord Jesus. I'm just feeling I'm embraced by the four living creatures and 24 elders in heaven. And it's new encounter. This week, that's interesting. There's a student from Australia. Just this week, before I preach this sermon, 
he sent a, a news to me. It's from a very famous Hillsong songwriter, Martha Sampson. And he publicly said this way, he is losing his Christian faith. And he has been uh, offering over 1,600 albums. And every Sunday, we have 5,000, uh, half a million people using his song every Sunday. And then this last week, he publicly tell everybody in the Instagram, I'm losing my faith. And this is what he says. Why? Someone has been so used by God. And then he said, I'm no longer a Christian. This is what he said. Time for some real talk. I am genuinely losing my faith. And it doesn't bother me. Like what bothers me now is nothing. I am so happy now, so at peace with the world. It's crazy. I am not in anymore. I want genuine truth. Not the I just believe it kind of truth. Science keep piecing the truth of every religion. Lots of things have helped people change their lives. Not just one version of God. Got so much more to say. But for me, I'm keeping it real. You see? He's looking for real things. He's looking for true, true. So follow Jesus faithfully. This word faithful have two general meanings. Of course, this doesn't mean it's from the Bible. If you just Google it, is there at least two basic meanings. It means loyal. And then another way is it, true to the original, true to the fact. So I think this uh, Hillsong writer, Martha Samson, is looking for truth so that he can be loyal to the Jesus. So we are facing the same crisis right now in the church. There are people maybe singing in the pulpit. They have been singing very good song and attracting many people follow. But are they really having a genuine, authentic relationship with Jesus? And why this brother so greatly used by God and he now say, I am no longer a Christian. And I'm doubting the faith that I believe. Why? Because he need to sing new song. <laughs> this new means stepping out your comfort song. And in order to sing new song, in here there's everything two things. First is by seeing. So this word has been used twice. And by hearing. So in order for us to be transformed or renewed, we need to be able to see. But right now, there are so many churches, they are like Laodicea. Jesus said, you are blind. You need to buy eye drop thousands of me so that your eye can see. So we have blindness in the church that we cannot see the Lamb. Jesus is reigning in the heaven. So we need to be able to renew our life by seeing the spiritual reality in the kingdom. Actually, in the Gospel of John, entering the kingdom, actually, sometimes you use the word seeing the kingdom. So entering, when you are saved, you enter the kingdom, it actually means you can see the things in kingdom. So are you seeing? Are you seeing or hearing there's a song, there's a music in heaven? So the first thing we need to examine our life is to renew our worship. Renew our ministry. Because worship, this, worship, this word means 
also, also can translate as ministry, service. So it's affecting how you serve the Lord. So how you worship is actually the similar to how you serve the Lord. So the first thing we need to learn is to renew. Am I able to step out of my comfort zone? I'm so proud of uh, my son, of course, my eldest, younger son here, that he is willing to step out of his comfort zone. After living in Australia for 10 years, I can imagine how difficult for a 14 years boy to leave the country he has so many fans and come back here. And he actually come back earlier than me. Three months earlier than me. I, I brought him back in April and I thank you for uh, this uh, Pastor Jeffrey and Pastor Peter for taking care of him and, and, and for T Tabby. And I'm, I'm glad that he is willing to step out his comfort zone. But honestly, he still say I, I still want to return to Australia. <laughs> but please pray for him. Because he's just like Isaac following Abraham. So the second thing we need to learn is to be sacrificial. Because he's ever seeing the lamb. Why we need to ever seeing the lamb? Because the lamb is a sacrificial lamb. So that's why God wants you to look at the lamb. Not just see how Jesus has already taken away your sin of the whole world and give you a relief and give you the mission to bring this good news to the whole world. That's why you need to see the lamb is in the heaven. Have you seen him? Are you sure he's in heaven? Apostle John emphasized he looked, he saw, and he invites you to behold. And it's real. So we need to be sacrificial. Am I giving the best to the Lord? Yes, you can sing, you can preach, you can use your own gift, yeah, you can use your own rhetoric. But are you giving the best to the Lord? You know that. So, the, so we need to ask ourselves, am I giving the best? Just like here, there are 144,000 who have been redeemed from the earth. They are giving the best. Why? Because they can, they can marry, actually. But they choose, in the time of this tribulation, they choose to remain single. They want to have a full attention, devotion to the God's word, the kingdom ministry. So what have you been sacrificial? What have you been giving up? What is your Isaac? Who is your Isaac? That you need to give up so that you can be like our Lord Jesus, giving his life to serve the purpose of the people. Have you done that? And that is the second thing we need to ask ourselves. Sacrificial. The third thing. Be very faithful in your calling. When God calls you, He has a plan for you. He will send you to the mission field and to accomplish the mission. So you need to know what is your calling, especially for brothers. Because if brothers have no vision, when you marry, your wife do not know where to go. Because you don't know where to go. So usually, when brother ask me, why, how come God hasn't prepared my next one, my, 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 my spouse, how come I haven't seen my sister? Because brother, you haven't sure what you want to do. You haven't been very clear what you want to do in God's kingdom. Because a, 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 a faithful sister, godly sister, they will look around. Oh, this brother, 
He really know what to do in God's kingdom. And she was so interested. Am I right? At least my wife told me that. <laughs> you, you don't need to agree. My wife is here, and she told me that. So be very faithful. Why I miss very faithful? There's a very tricky here. People may be faithful in the beginning, but as they go along the route, there will be a lot of obstacles coming up, and they will what? They will back off. They will promise you before the marriage that I will do it, do it, do it like that. But once you get married, everything change because life change. Be very faithful. Mean from the beginning to the end. Faith. So Apostle Paul used this word. You don't need to turn to the Bible. In Romans one six seventeen, he said, "In the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. A righteousness that is by faith." It's an NIV translation from the first. To the last, it means not just in the beginning, but all the way ongoing to the end. You may say, "I'm in favor in the last ten years," or but what about now? So very faithful. So these brothers, they are following Jesus wherever he goes. I still remember my my president Chuck Swindoll. He mentioned one story, personal story. He said, just about before he graduated, his master of theology degree at that time, he's praying, Lord, Lord, where should I go? And then he prayed really sincerely that he wanted to go to whatever the Lord wanted him to go. But somehow he feels like there's one place he doesn't want to go. And then he tells the Lord, please. Except this one. <laughs> Except this one. I'm not. Gonna tell, I'm not going to tell you which one. Okay. But actually, it's at Los Angeles. One, one special, special place. And you know what? After praying, 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 pray, at the end, the answer is, he ultimately go to the same place that he don't want to go. <laughs> the exception is the one the Lord ultimately sent him to go. So his advice for us as his student. Don't ever tell the Lord <laughs> that you don't want to go any specific place. You may end up to the same place that you don't want to go. So I will agree with him. So the final, not only to follow wherever he goes, we need to let the Lord to lead us, not the Lord follow you. There are so many Christians; they want the Lord to follow you, to follow them. But you are not allowed to do that. So the final thing is be blameless or be perfect. No lies was found in their mouth, and they are blameless. And I just use this, Mister Perfect. It doesn't mean that I have read the book. I will be honest to you. But interestingly, when I find out the book, there's a story. It's a number forty forty two book series. The story is like that. Everything about Mr. Perfect is just perfect. He never has a bad day or anything. But this is not the meaning of my perfectness. Okay? He just like I just like this story, the Mr. Perfect. And actually, I I like another character in the book. One day, hosts a party and invites everyone over. Is Mr. Perfect, including the ill mannered Mr. Apiti. Uppity, U P P I T Y, uppity. Who has, who never has a nice thing to say to anyone? It's a big contrast. I, I like this uppity because it's the, it's the, uh, it's the opposite that I want you to see. What do you mean by perfect here? Because here is saying they are blameless in what? In their words. So in James, there is a similar idea. He said we all stumble in many ways. It means we are not really perfect. 
we may be a, you know, not a, really a good father. I tell my son, I'm not a good father. I tell my congregants, I'm not a good pastor for me. I'm not a, really a good teacher to your standard or whatever standard. So I know I'm not good. I, I, I may be stumbling in many ways. But what? Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect. This is the thing that we need to learn in our lives in order to follow Jesus. So follow Jesus faithfully means let people see from our lives, from our work, is Christ lifeless. Is Christ lightning? So are you ready to accept the invitation? You now the standard. Follow Jesus. And we need to make our decision. Earlier in our life is better. I remember 30 years ago when I accept Christ. And then a year late a year something later, or 40 months later, I told my mom, I want to be a minister. My mom said. Huh? <laughs> I said, I want to be minister, mom. Huh? <laughs> because I'm working as an audit CPA firm at the time in Hong Kong, KPMC. And he, she cannot imagine what does it like to be a minister. And I said, what do you mean? Oh, I said, God called me to be a minister. So I just want you to be prepared. Mom, I know you love me so much. I don't want to you to give you a heart attack. <laughs> Suddenly see your, your, your son, I'm the only son, going to seminary, leaving his job. And I know you will give her a heart attack. You will, I know. So I prepare her. But my mom said, okay, but not now. <laughs> not now. Because you, you are so young. Just graduate from the uni, a year and a half. No, not now. As you get uh, get married, you buy a house first <laughs> and have a few children. <laughs> then you can consider to be a minister. How would you respond to a loving mom, knowing that? Well, at that time, by the way, she hasn't been a Christian yet. She has no kingdom concept. And right now she has she's a Christian, but she has no idea what do you mean. So I tell her, Mom, Mother Day is coming. What do you want? I have two bundles of flowers, rows. This bundle is so beautiful, just blossoming. But another one is dying. Oh, and what do you want? And he, she doesn't want to answer my question. <laughs> because she know. And but I give I give her my verdict. Mom, I want to treasure my youthness. I want to give the best to my Lord. Just like you want me to give the best flower. So dear brother and sister, Christ enough, have you decided to follow him? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we ponder upon your word, yes, we want to follow Jesus. We have decided. Follow Jesus. So if anyone here, you make up your mind, you said, I want to follow Jesus. Tell the Lord, yes, I want to follow him. So raise up your hand. I want to follow him. It's so honoring to follow Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus, not only
only we want to follow you. We want to give our best. Something that hurt us, we need to be sacrificial. So examine our heart. Anything that preventing us to follow you wholeheartedly, may you take it away so that we can follow you. Sacrificially. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray.